Hi, and welcome back to the Healthy Voyager. I'm Carolyn Scott, and this time you're joining me in San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel de Allende is hands down one of the most magical and romantic towns in the world. The heart of Mexico, both literally as well as figuratively, this 16th century village turned artist and cultural centric town just three hours from Mexico City is full of incredible places to stay, things to do, and eat, making it a true hidden gem. Places such as Hacienda El Santuario, located in a beautiful old house full of history. The hotel is located in the historic center of the city, just minutes away from the cathedral. Hacienda El Santuario is made up of three homes full of magic and history, where each corridor takes you to a new experience. The accommodations are luxury meets history, and the hospitality of the staff is second to none. Their homemade breakfasts in the courtyard are wonderfully romantic and absolutely delicious. Additionally, Hacienda offers phenomenal cultural events, including cooking classes that celebrate local flavors and techniques. They even accommodate special diet cooks and guests. So it's breakfast time here at the Hacienda del Santuario. And I have to say, it is not only a lovely setting, but I can see the kitchen and uh, it looks like everything's fresh made to order. Uh, they bring out fresh fruit and coffee. Uh, they are able to make vegan options. Everything smells incredible. As I was walking down the stairs, I was already excited. I'm gonna dig in shortly. It was time to explore the wonderful places in and around San Miguel. And my first stop was Viñedo San Lucas. So I'm here at the Viñedos San Lucas here in San Miguel de Allende. It's uh, just outside the city limits and it is an organic vineyard that also is home to a lavender farm and olive trees. So they make olive oil, they make lavender essential oils and obviously wines, uh, all organic. And the great thing about this place is you can actually live here if you want. It almost feels like Tuscany. You can buy your own plot of land, build your house and have your own vineyard. Isn't that just gorgeous? I had the wonderful opportunity to get a tour of the winery, as well as a terrific wine tasting and pairing right on the property. So during this wine tasting, they're see. teaching us the techniques and to see the contrast, she's having us take the wine and look at it against the napkin. That's a pretty cool trick. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the stem holding trick already. The winery produces and bottles all of their wines on site, as well as a number of products such as honey, olive oil, and lavender products, all of which are grown or cultivated on the property. So we just did a really delicious pairing of fruit and nuts and bread and their fantastic olive oil with their three signature wines, their Chardonnay, um, La Mitad Que Era, Macabeo, Moscatel. Macabeo, Moscatel y la tercera. Ah, oh, perdón, no. Este es Malbec, okay. Cabernet oh, Sauvignon Malbec. y Syrah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cabernet Malbec, Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah, and this is a cab. <coughs> but this is a grappa grape, and it is uh, basically a shot in a grape. <laughs> it's gnarly, but it's worth it. The property and offerings on the grounds are vast and include a high-end resort along with world-class dining. I was treated to a lovely meal on the vineyard before heading off to check out what else this beautiful city and region had to offer. Perched on a rooftop of a fabulous hotel in the city center, you'll find the restaurant at Casablanca. Here, you'll enjoy global cuisine, along with some of the prettiest views of the city. A new day brought new adventures, which meant exploring some of San Miguel's folk tales and locales. 
Well, as some of you may or may not know, I love a good ghost story. And when I'm in an old city, such as San Miguel de Allende, I love going on ghost tours and finding out the underbelly of what went on in these old, old cities. Uh, and I'm here at just one of those places. This bridge behind me is uh, quite legendary here in the Guanajuato area in San Miguel. Back in the 1570s, a friar, two friars, were going between cities uh, running an errand and they were assassinated. And uh, they were pushed off this bridge. Uh, it's been closed since the 90s. However, legend has it that people who've been in accidents on this bridge um, have been in accidents because they've seen visions of the friars. So um, I came down here to check it out and I'm hoping to find out so more myths and legends later on this trip. Luckily, I saw no such vision while checking out the bridge, so I popped over to Mercado Sano for a little shopping. A co-op and organic food and artisan market, here shoppers can find a variety of vegan products, fresh squeezed juices, and even handmade jewelry. A great place to stock up on healthy treats and ingredients, as well as hunt for unique, one-of-a-kind gifts and finds. All that ghost hunting and shopping worked up an appetite, so I headed back to the Hacienda Santuario for a little art tour and fabulous cooking class. The hotel is chock full of finely decorated spaces with gorgeous pieces of Mexican popular art from the states of Michoacán, Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Guanajuato, offering you all the wonders that Mexico has in just one place, including terrific food. I was so fortunate to meet Santuario's star chef and learn about the local delicacies and traditional foods of the area. We made a full meal from scratch, from the handmade masa for the tortillas to the mole, tamales, to the sopes. I had a newfound appreciation for the amount of time and dedication that goes into these dishes. It was a phenomenal afternoon of cooking and learning that wasn't complete until I met with the hotel's resident cocktail pro to create some tasty libations to help wash down the elaborate meal. San Miguel is a foodie's dream as the town draws talented chefs from around the globe, inspired by the beauty and charm of the region. So there's no shortage of incredible eats, and Caban is one of those places. Creative twists on local fare, Caban is also chic, innovative, and home to the only speakeasy in town. Since I was on an extended stay in San Miguel, I thought I'd try out a different style of accommodation to see the variety of offerings in town. Casa 1810 is a stunning property within the city center, mixed with modern flair. 
A lovely boutique hotel steeped in history and charm, central to style and sophistication in the heart of San Miguel de Allende. As with all of the hotels and restaurants in the city center, they are all built within the existing historic buildings, and 1810 is no different. However, their unique take on modern meets historic is apparent as soon as you step through the doors. Just walking through the city feels magical. There's something in the air in San Miguel that almost feels like you've been transported. One afternoon, I happened upon a mystical man whose knowledge of the Mayan zodiac was spellbinding. His reading was spot on, and he gave me a personalized, hand-painted pouch of lucky seeds along with a heartwarming ceremony that will remain as one of my favorite experiences of my time in San Miguel. It was morning once again, and breakfast at Casa 1810 is a must, boasting gorgeous views of the city and main square. The food, as well as the ambiance, are a great way to start the day. San Miguel is home to some incredible spas and resorts, but nothing beats an afternoon at Escondido Place. I'm here at Escondido Place, which means hidden place, and there are some hidden treasures in and around this forest around me. If you like thermal baths, you should come with me. A beautiful, serene park is home to a small boutique hotel, restaurant, picnic areas, and hot springs. Guests can spend all day bouncing from pool to pool, each with their own special charm. Plus, if you really want to pamper yourself, be sure to visit their on-site spa that offers a wide variety of services, including temescals. Not far from the hot springs, you'll find Nirvana, both literally as well as figuratively, a lovely estate that hosts a beautiful restaurant and several bungalows guests can stay in and enjoy the gorgeous property, as well as spa. I spent a lovely afternoon there dining and drinking their delicious concoctions as they do a wonderful job of making lovely vegan options. To round out my day of pampering, I headed back to town for some spa time. From the moment you enter Spa Iris de Dos Casas, you will be welcomed to a private sanctuary where a completely individual journey will be created. Their expert therapists will guide you in the design of personalized treatments and you will leave fully refreshed. On my final night, I had the wonderful pleasure of dining at my hotel, Casa 1810, and let me tell you, it blew my mind. Their super hip, young, and talented chef created some of the best vegan dishes and drinks I'd ever had. Just when I thought San Miguel couldn't get any better, it did. I can't say enough about this charming town in the heart of Mexico, as it truly has something for everyone, and there's no place else like it. From historic to luxurious and everything in between, make it a must visit on your bucket list. Well, sadly it's time for me to say adios to San Miguel de Allende, but there's more adventure to come on the next Healthy Voyager and I hope you'll join me.